I know you had uh, this thing on Instagram where you were showing some criticisms that people, you know, say about your work and 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 just and Christian, it wasn't mine, no. That's Christian, that's the yeah, crazy just Christian part. rap, yeah, in just general. Christian rap in general. Yeah. And um, some of it say like, you, well, you're trying to use the God's name, God's name to yeah. make money and for influence yep. and this and that, yep. and it's not real and this, you know, yep. whatever it is. How do you kind of find that balance? And what do you say to those that are skeptical about what the mission actually is? Man. You know, I said this in a record that I, I haven't released yet. Basically, I got to the place of, like you say, walking through the seven series. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first did the seven series, the comments that came with it <laughs> and the comments <laughs> that came with it was, oh, man, I ain't never heard gospel rap like that. And I looked at my cousin like, man, they better not put me in that box, bro. This ain't no gospel rap. But I had. I had went through a transformation so deep mm -hmm. that what was coming out of me naturally was the testimony. Mm -hmm. And so because that's what was coming out, that's what was coming out on these records. I remember, you know, seeing the comments. I remember seeing the followers jump up. I remember seeing those things. And of course, when you're doing what God calls you to do, right? the enemy going to try to detract you. So the enemy tried to plant a, my, to plant a seed in my mind like, Oh, well, man, you just being a prophet for profit. Mm. And I'm like, well, that ain't it. But I definitely didn't want to do Christian hip hop. So I'm like, all right, God, what, what is this? And I had to really, you know, go into my prayer closet. And God said, but did I tell you that? Like, that's that's a word and a trick of the enemy. Mm. What you doing is what you're supposed to be doing. And. Even even further, let me know it's about time that you started doing it because I've been trying to get you to do it forever, but you've been running away from because we was like Christian hip hop is corny. That's the truth. We mm. was like, damn, that ain't it. Like we love Jesus, but if we gonna rap. We gonna spit. <laughs> like we not we we not gonna we not gonna do that. Mm -hmm. So when the acceptance of it came, then God was like, "This is what I've been calling you to do." Hmm. So I had to, uh, you know step on the on the serpent's head you know <laughs> and, and, and remind him you know who i am in christ and uh and, and god definitely checked me like man that's not what i i called you you only move by what i called you yes sir so yeah i don't judge people's religion or their faith base yep. or their spirituality but mm -hmm. when you look at the black community there's this love and hate with christianity and the history yeah. behind it connected with slavery mm -hmm. And then right. the infighting amongst Christians and the word yeah. and what, what the words mean and religious mm -hmm. wars. And it, there's all type of things. Um, it's a lot. And different artists calling out some things. Like I recently was watching a video of um, uh, Yellow Pain and he was talking about some of the issues within the Christian church and that he still mm -hmm. maintains his faith. But, you know, he, he, he doubts a lot of stuff that happens within that. So. Um, what are your thoughts about people that that really struggle with, you know, the idea and thoughts of Christianity and um, some of the, you know, some of the uh, the negativity from the past into the present? Speaking from non-believer standpoint or believer standpoint who have a, a problem with Christianity? I guess we could look at both. OK, for non-believers, I go back to, man, I, I always pray that they have the encounter because usually non-believers have up this fence. um. And, and they've convinced themselves to stand on that other side of the fence. And so they give you a whole list and reasoning of why they on the other side of the fence. And it's hard to kind of, you know, knock that fence down. Mm -hmm. And so my whole thing is I hope that one day they either look over the fence or God shows that mercy and grace and he meets them on their side of the fence. And that's where that encounter comes. That will give them that experience and explanation. That's always my hope for every um, non-believer. Mm -hmm. And that's also why it's our job as the believer when we touched on it earlier. You know, uh, that's why it's wild to see when the saved and pressing the save. Like, because, again, that's good. But the lost souls, you know, is is why we have the responsibility that we have so that maybe they just come mm -hmm. and peek over that other side of the fence and say, hey, you know what? Let me go ahead and give it a try. Mm. But for the believers who feel a certain type of way, 
I, I understand, you know, the history. I understand, you know, again, I, I come from the inner city. You know, I come from the section. And so I've, I've heard it all, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, the, the insults that you could think of, you know, as far as Christianity or, oh, why you believe in this or, oh, man, you know, man, man. But I would, I would say for our believers to focus on what the truth is out of the Bible. And then right. focus on what the truth is in the relationship that you have with God. Because again, everybody experienced with Christ. See, because we can't go based off others' words. We can't go based off other people's experiences. Right. Because at the end of the day, Mr. G, his salvation and what he's accepted does not confirm my salvation mm -hmm. and what I've accepted. I've mm -hmm. got to walk that line myself. Right. And so- that's what I would encourage even our believers to do. Yeah, it's some stories. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's some history based facts that definitely led us on the unfair side of the coin. Mm -hmm. However, it does not stop the truth, you know, and, and, and the truth will set you free. And the last right. time that I checked, I'm not trying to go to the pastor, pastoral on them, but hey, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So there's the truth. And if we focus on the truth, and the love of that truth, mm -hmm. that love literally, well, which God had for us, for it says God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son for us. So mm -hmm. if we focus on these truths, then all of the other things, which we're not going to just bypass like they didn't happen. We're not going to bypass, you know, and, and, and not mention it or tuck it under the rug. But I think that our focus should be on how we could possibly change it and then focusing on the truths as well. Uh, so every day I'm going hard. I'm talking business, bank accounts, and credit cards. And somehow we defeat the odds and making sure that no one starves illegal or you had a job.